and we live. We're recording live. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is uh, this is new to me. The same way um, I'm new to it. Um, I decided during this quarantine time to uh, endeavor, or not endeavor, or try new. Yeah, endeavor would be the word. Yeah, just put my efforts in uh, into something new. And um, I, I said, why not? So let me start it off the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lessons Learned Along the Way, ATW. And uh, today, I have a special guest. Uh, this man right here uh, is a savant, I would like to say. Um, producer extraordinaire. I wouldn't even just want to make you a producer. He is a good he has i don't say good that's an understatement he has an amazing musical ear um skateboarder part-time part-time and uh a, and, a, and a fitness guru if you watch his uh instagram <laughs> he'll tell you all about that ladies and gentlemen i have a fast I'm, I'm I'm expecting like claps and stuff like that. I'll probably put that in the background. <laughs> yeah, we gotta right. add sound effects in there, bro. Yeah, add so <laughs> yeah, add something just to make it like super climatic. And, yeah, like, it's gotta be lit, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, Afos, you know, tell the people um, all about you. Tell them about your background and and who you are. Oh man, well, you know, I I think you actually stated it quite well. Um, uh, I'm a, I'm a producer, you know, that's the, really, I, I love music, man. I love music. Um, and, and that's really where my expertise is at. And, 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 um, you know, that's, that's something that I want to share and that I do share with the world is, uh, my musical ear, my musical taste. Um, you know, music has brought me a long way, you know, music has allowed me to develop myself, you know, my spirit. Uh, it's allowed me to, to just grow in, in, in all different ways. Yeah. So, um, that's so like, so when you say, um, develop, let's talk about where, where, where are you from? Um, well, how did this all start? How did this all start? Uh, where this you all, from and how did this all start? So, so I'm originally from Wichita, Kansas and shout out to uh, the dub. That's, that's where I, yeah. Shout out to the dub three, one, six, three, one, six. Yep. Up. Yep. Uh, that's where I was born and raised, and and really it started off in the church. So you know, oh, yeah. I would say when I was being conceived in the, in, in my mom's womb, uh, my mom, you know, my dad, they're 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 avid churchgoers. My mom, you know, she was the secretary for um, a church that I grew up in, and my dad was a minister. So oh, wow. um, you know, every pretty much every day I was at church. You know, you know either, what's what what I always find interesting, every all my friends that grew up in the church or children that were um, from uh, minister uh, mi like what do we call it? like pastors kids they all played like four or five instruments I mean nah that's exaggerated but one or two instruments I could say yeah. four or five they played drums they played keyboard they probably did tambourine they did. Bro. Singing is an instrument. Some so, people keep singing. Yeah, yeah. They, there's so no. many things. Like the church is a, a hub. It's like it's like a a, a nursery for talent it when is. it comes to music. Like it, it, they they get these innate abilities and how that translates into what they become and where they take it. Who knows? But like a lot of people have that same story who are great. You know, talk yeah. about Whitney Houston. Talk about people like, um, dare I say, Ryan Leslie? Because I, I kind of heard yeah. his story. Like he started somewhere where he was playing piano. I mean, he did, he did a lot. But I could be fact checked and corrected. But like a lot of people have your exact background. Yeah, we could say Beethoven, man. You know what I'm saying? Zaytoven. Beethoven, yeah. Like I said, I could. We could name <laughs> a million. A yeah, it's the same of, story. Of it's the same background. It's amazing in how this world reflects. You know, the, the course of the world reflects on how somebody becomes it just mm -hmm. your um, rise to who you are right now, to what you have put forward through your body of work is almost the same as someone. It's parallel to the same as someone 
it could be a lady, it could be a man, it could be a little, you know, just if they're successful, it, it just goes in the same, it's like the same road. Uh, but even if you're from different states, different countries, I guess, but the church is like a common denominator or. I'll go as far as to say that it, 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 it's all based on your community. You know, uh, the, your community is what shapes your spirit, what shapes um, your ideals, you know, and, and it shapes yeah. who, you, who you turn into, who you become. Yeah. So, you know, Quit. church church is definitely a, a big uh, a part of, yeah. especially the black community. So, you know, that, yeah. that's that's why we have a lot of uh, artists and, and talented musicians that are birthed in, in, in our race because of church, because of yeah. spirituality. And, yeah. Uh, and then even just taking that a little bit farther, um, um, the, 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 the value of music, dance and drama to the African people or people from yeah. that continent of Africa, music was used as a way to tell stories in a way to store history because we realize telling these kids these stories just verbally it never stuck but if you let them if you put a melody and a drum to it they moved they lasted longer over generations and if you look at west african history and you see how it's translated in south america where people are doing um the Braz the the uh what do they call it um uh Gosh, I should have done. Uh, this is me just going off the cuff, like uh, the fight dancing type of thing. Is oh, okay. it called? Um, uh, yeah. um. I, um, I, I know, I know it every day, but to, for some reason, I'm just having a, a brain fart. But like, just seeing how it translates in South America and how it translates here, and how it translates in Haiti, and how it translates in Jamaica, where they created dance hall music and storytelling, and how storytelling is now in blues and blues be makes country and blues was actually black, you know, and how this craft from African drum patterns, you know, cause if you look at classically trained music, uh, percussion was never a big instrument. It was a lot of, it was a lot of wind, a lot of, you know, strings, a lot of, you know, it was never the drum and the drum is the heartbeat and the yeah. drum is the rhythm. So, yeah. If we talk about really where it comes from, like your story may even go deep to West African history. If you look at some kids in West Africa, they're the same. They're just like you. They probably grew up in the church before they started rapping. They grew up in the church with the, you know, and they were being, they were taught how to organize and song arrange and know your tone and all these good little things. But um, talking about, um, worldly influence to the sound that we listen to today. Um, let's talk about your personal influence. Who influenced you to become a Foster? Who influenced me? And, uh, and not, not, and not my, only one person, just you could go on and say a whole bunch of people. And Well, well you know, once again, I could start off with my um, minister of music at my church, um, mm -hmm. which you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, it was actually just last week. He, he actually passed away. Oh, man. Um, right. So, you know, but he was Sorry he was a that. huge influence on me. He was a huge influence on how I hear music and, and um, you know, because he was a choir director as well. So I was in the choir. So, you know, my mom forced me, you know, I had to go and I had uh, my mom forced me to join the choir. So. Um, it was through those rehearsals that I kind of grew to understood or grew, grew to understand uh, harmonies, melodies, you know, because you have your sopranos, your tenors, your altos. And so just through my my uh, choir director, uh, uh, right. you know, rehearsing songs and, and telling this group of people to sing this song or sing this phrase this way and you guys sing it this way and then we'll stack the vocals this way. You know, basically, that was me figuring out and understanding harmony, melody, and and putting chords and and and, and notes together. So, just Fun me fact. being influenced by that. That's what Fun shaped fact. me to uh, be very melodic with my music. Yeah. Fun fact: I was kicked out of a choir. <laughs> For what, um, bro? Which uh, what did you do? <laughs> 
I mean, I, cash, and that's the, the irony is I make music cash, now and I try to song organize and arrange sounds. So I grew up with the bug of music and um, in my family, no one did music. Okay. No one did music, but little did I know my grandfather that I never met was a musician. I didn't know that till I turned 30. Oh, wow. I didn't know anybody that did music. Cause I never met this dude. So I didn't know where my gravitas, why I gravitate to music. Even when as a, as a kid, everybody did sports school, sports school, get successful. And I came from a family that was comp ultra competitive yeah. and music at that time was more of relax, creative and yeah. creative and competitive. Don't go together. Like you let somebody create at their own time. Right. So I come from this ultra competitive household. Right. And I was the only one, you know, you know, falling, inclining with music, inclining with sit down. I used to, before even music, I used to draw a lot. I used to paint, but I used to have music playing. So mm -hmm. like, music was like the it, like i had a soundtrack to every stage in my life right so mm -hmm. i i i had a friend of mine that was in a choir he was like okay we have this choir we i was like 12 about 13. i just joined high school or here you'd say junior high and um the reason why we did that is because they were doing vocal training okay and, um the vocal trainer came in and told me my voice sucked. I cannot be part of this group of people that were touring I you, the man, country at around that time. Like, like, bro, your voice was probably trash or something. Man. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I won't lie to you. I, I was heartbroken because I didn't know I could not sing. What did wait? What did he have you singing? Did he have you singing like altos, tenor? Um, low, lower, I was like lower thirteen, notes? and my voice was starting to crack. So it was it was weird for me to control it. it till till now, I I mean, I thought as a kid they used to always, I mean, you know, as a kid everybody would make you sing songs just to like replay songs on the radio just to entertain grown folks, right? And yeah. I used to sing okay, and then I didn't know that my voice was changing and becoming weird, and I could not control it. So we were singing. And he was walking past, he's like a surge, like the music coordinators and the conductors were like military people kind of in the way they approached it. They'd walk around and just try to hear everybody to see if everybody's on key. And they're like, hey, bro, come step out, step outside the line. I, I mean, you're, I like your effort. I know you come for every practice, but this is not for you. Your voice is cracking and shit, bro. You yeah, got to This is not, not for you uh, and we don't have we don't have a place for you over here. So <laughs> I got I, you know, I, I got kicked to the side and they moved on and they did great stuff, man. They traveled the world and, they, and the worst part they went to Germany to perform. Wow. The choirs like it was a boy choir like and they yeah. went they traveled the world and my friends will come back, send pictures, or you know, you know, tell me all the places they've been to, and I'm like sitting back. I'm like, I could have been there, but I didn't have vocals. Damn. And, I, and then that's when I was like, fuck music, and I did sports. <laughs> but that's a quick fun fact. You Sorry, you, you didn't try to develop your voice, you know. After after that, like, no, you, you didn't know what? Have bad, like bathroom uh, 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 shower I, sessions with your with your. Let voice. me tell you this. At that time. Coming from a household where everybody specializes, right? Everybody finds their niche. Everybody finds what they're good at, and they become the best at it, right? Yeah. If, you're good at, if you're good at school, you become the best at that shit. Like, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll cuss. It's my, it's, my, it's my pod. But you become the best at it. My mom listens to my podcast, by the way. Yeah, okay. But um, Shout out to mom. <laughs> you become the best at that ish. You, you just have to find something you're good at and become the best at it. And then it was like a competitive household. Like, you you know, my, my young sister is putting the light on my butt. Like, she's good at this. She's, you know, my older sister is good at this. My older brother good at everything, you know. So I'm like, oh, God, what am I good at? Like, you know, this music thing could be my lane. Because yeah. they have no vocal. Nobody had vocal ability, you know. Nobody had... <laughs> So um, it, when it comes full circle and I'm the musician in the family, and then my mom later on tells me her dad was a musician at 30. That, like, messed me up. 
and then and she said things that she stayed telling me I have mannerisms like him and the way I do my stuff my OCD or me always wanting to complete everything I start you know even though it's not done to the highest but it's always I have to finish what I start like if if it's this if I if I open that book I have to finish it and Gotcha. Some of these things are just innate things that you don't even know that you have this personality. But um, sorry, I'm I'm kind of like talking too much about. Um, nah, man, I'm actually learning. <laughs> You're teaching me stuff that I never knew about you, man. I know. So we've um, known each other for what, like ten, ten years uh, or something geez. like that. And I, that was yeah, that was the first years, time I ever heard ten of that years, story. ten years. Yeah. Um, moving from your influence, and you were still talking about your choir director. I know you have some other influences besides your choir director. Oh yeah. So, so, uh, when I was two, two years old, uh, right. my mom actually started getting, a, a, a you know, she decided to get piano lessons. So oh, she, wow. she, she started taking piano lessons and she ended up buying this keyboard that I still have to this day, man. It's like, it's like an old Casio keyboard, bro. And I fell in love with that thing, you know? Um, I, of course I had my own little like toy piano, but Every time my mom would get on there, you know, sometimes she would just leave it unattended and I would go up, you know, climb on top of the bed and then I press this. So it had like this little button. It was like a demo button. Oh, wow. You press the demo and like a song would pop up and then you could kind of play along to it. Play along to it, yeah. Yeah. And it was actually like, you know, to be specific, it was like, I don't know if you know who Rick Ashley is. I knew uh, I, I do know who that is. It was like a Rick. It was like it was such a cheesy song that was on the demo, but I would just press that. But I would play it every single day. You, man. you know like, what's funny? We label <laughs> this word cheesy and corny to things that we feel like will make us feel embarrassed when we put that out in the air. But you'd be surprised that a lot of people had that Rick Ashley influence, or they heard it, and it's some. It's a Sonic Sonics sounds beat patterns stay in your mind forever you could have dementia you could have but you remember when you hear like, when you hear stuff like um if you hear the shook ones <laughs> pattern oh, like yeah. you be oh, yeah. you forget where you put your keys last night but you'll always remember you never how that, yeah so like i mean things so that make us who we are that's like, actually what was imprinted upon my i guess soul you know just because yeah I fell in love with it, man. And, and that's and, the foundation. Yeah, that's the foundation, yeah. and it's it's not cheesy. It's not corny. It's it's the first brick that was put down. Yeah, and and, and so from there, it went on to um, you know, because when I was younger, for some reason, like I just had real bad like night terrors and stuff. So like, oh yeah, I was always like just uh, like afraid of the dark, or um, you know, just. I couldn't be by myself, you know, when, like, say, when my parents would go to bed. Oh, me, me too, man. My sister. You watch a lot bed. of movies, I could tell. You no, watch a lot of movies. What it caused that? Because, like, we weren't allowed to watch, like, scary movies and stuff. Oh. We wow. just, I think it was my vivid imagination. I had such oh. a broad imagination as a kid. Man, like, anything that I thought of that was, like, somewhat scary, oh, yeah. bro, I felt like it would come to life, like, in the dark. So, yeah. in order to cope with that, I would, you know, literally just turn on the radio. So I had this little like boom box. It was like a little teeny tiny boom yeah. box that I would turn on and, and turn on. Um, I don't know if you're if if you're like a a, um, a native to Wichita. But no, I'm not. I'm 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 just a settler. I, I just yeah, we here. had a station called ninety three point nine, um, right. and uh, actually one hundred seven point three. Right. I, was, I know one seven. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to. That was one hundred seven point three. Yeah. Can I cuss on here? Or no. No. Nah, cuss. 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 Okay. My mom, my mom yeah. is a G. My mom, my mom li likes what I do. So, one hundred seven point three was like alternative rock and, and alternative music, you know, because I couldn't listen to rap music. Uh, and just for the cr chronology, what time is this? What year is this? This is nineteen ninety four through like ninety. So you listen to a lot of grunge. Yeah, I listen to a lot of grunge. I listen to um, a lot of like um, like Alanis Morissette. Alanis, you listen. To, to, I like sex and no, I smell yeah. sex and can yeah. they? Yeah. Actually, seen them perform live. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who's that? <laughs> That's a uh, Mark Marcus Flagler. Yeah, hair or uh, uh, three cents, none the pen, uh, none the rich, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> kiss me. Come on, man. Come on, man. I, they, they were yeah. like the original Paramore. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they were Paramore. I was a. Uh, 
Oh, oh my bad. That, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was me. Yeah, um, they, they, I was a, I was a big No Doubt fan. Oh, me too. Uh, me too, bro. Uh, what was it? Um, don't say. Hold on. What's don't, the song? Um, don't say. Uh, yeah, don't, uh, 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 don't speak. Don't uh, speak. Yeah. Yeah. I used to, I used to bump that and. Me too. Honestly, I didn't know what I was listening to. I didn't. I mean, I was a hip hop head, but I had a brother that used to listen to uh, my brother. Like he was. Uh, let me, like, you know, just based off what you said, like you used your boombox or your radio as your protection dog in the night. It kept you, it kept you comfortable. Yep. So innately, people say what you listen to while you go to sleep becomes part of you. A lot of people like study for exams, playing their audio book or whatever, and they remember that stuff sub subconsciously. So mm -hmm. if music is your subconscious, that is part of your DNA. Even now as a 30, 20, 27 year old, 28 year old, 30 year old man, like, you know, okay, older, 30. 31 in like 30, uh, two, two weeks. Okay, okay, okay. 31 year old man, you should have not said that. Man. You, you give him the industry age. <laughs> but um, that's part of your subconsciousness in your DNA and I understand it. I understand why music is very, very precious to you because it, it ain't just symbolize sound. It symbolizes comfort. It symbolizes protection. It symbolizes uh, friendship. Some people don't even have friends, but they friends with DMX because that's who raised them, you know, like, or yeah. like, look at rappers like fathers. Like it's ridiculous how people have a relationship with music that you cannot you cannot explain, but you have to know what their initial foundation was. What was the initial brick that yeah. created this whole thing? That who they are. So it's a uh, it's a it's a chemical bond, bro. You oh know yeah. It, it's, it's, after a while, yeah. you know, you just you anything that you grow attached to, you 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 grow you know. attached because of the chemicals in your that that are released and, in your brain. So. And we are talking about contemporary rock. Like my brother, uh, my older brother is like ten years older than me, so he's like my uncle. Like really, we never had like a brother to brother relationship because he was always looking at me, me like he was calling me kiddo. Like you know, just he was my brother, but like he is. By the time I'm ten, he's twenty. So what's our relationship? Yeah. What what are we talking about? So all I would do is I would listen to what he's playing, and he was so into rock and R and B. Okay. Them two. And he's his rock and roll was never classical. It was always like uh top forty rock. So like he would play like uh Rick D top forty like radio. And yeah. I would listen, I would sit down and listen to what this dude is playing. So I would listen to a lot of uh No Doubt. No, no doubt, doubt was yep. was was key to my uh development and understanding. Third eye blind. Third eye blind, come yeah. on now. Yeah. Come on, man. Third eye blind. Uh, you know, like I was, Green, I was Green also Day, listening. Like, um, yeah, Green, I didn't get into Green Day because they were like, that, I was kind of getting older when they were like, I mean, they were still, but like, do you want to be American? In it, in it, in it, in it. Yeah. I don't know what that name of that song is, but I, I remember mean, that. Life, though, was the shit, though, man. The, the acoustic. Yeah, third song. Eye Blind, uh, 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 something blonde. What, what's it called? Um, Four Non Blondes? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I used to also listen to, um, a lot of what's what's their name? Now now I'm, I'm like I'm like freezing because now you you making me tap into like my nineties. We can say like like Creed. Creed, Creed, Creed uh, was uh, Creed was um with arms wide open. Mm -hmm, but that's um, kind of new. That's like early two thousand. Yeah, yeah, okay, you're still talking about nine. I'm still talking about that 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 age where you don't have a prejudice a prejudice ear where this is how I look like. This is why I need to hear. Like you just listening to what's dope, and um, I I'll tell you this: my biggest. This sounds corny as hell, but I used to listen to uh, uh, what's his name? Not Pit. I used to listen to a lot of Peter Cetera. Who? Peter Cetera. He was he was a lead singer for Chicago. I used to listen oh. to a lot of Police. Who? Police. Okay, yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to listen to a lot of Police, and till today. And I'm, I'm, this is, if I had a horn, I'll put that there. Sting is one of, is my top, uh, top six favorite artists. That's crazy, right? Favorite, <laughs> favorite. 
And hey, I used so, to listen. So, hey, I'm, I don't mean to get off topic. But Sorry. What, what uh, you, yeah, pull me back in. Pull me back in. But what do you think of um um Ju Juice World song that he, when he sampled Sting? What do you, what do you think of that whole situation? The thing you know is this: saying? that song is so complaint compelling with the instrumental that it it doesn't matter what you're doing. I'm just listening to how that that just how that rips. Yeah. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, 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 that was dun, a nice dun, beat. Dun, dun, dun. It went Nas was, did it. Nas did it. The only, the, yeah, Na, right. Nas the did it too. Thing. So like, yeah. Uh, people don't know uh, what's the name of this song. Mm. I don't know. Lucid don't dreams. Know. Lucid <laughs> dreams. Lucid dreams. Lucid dreams. I mean, dreams. that's from from from, from, from Juice World. Lucid dreams. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, uh, Sting is a big influence to me, and. Um, and um, I was a kid when I got introduced to the police, Chicago, Peter Cetera. He did the soundtrack to Karate Kid. And I'm sorry, I'm pulling, I'm just talking about myself. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, he did the soundtrack to, go do your Googles. Peter Cetera, uh, I am a man who would fight for your, uh, I forgot the name of the song, but I know the, the song because I watched the Karate Kid and that was playing in the 80s, coming to the 90s. Anyways, yeah, that was my stuff. Back to you, my, ho uh, my, my guest. Sorry, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now losing my track right now. I'm like, oh, gosh, you got me excited talking about the contemporary rock. And uh, but we're back old, now. He's old, he's, we back, we back, we back. So, we, we back. Your, so your influence based off you – listening to the radio, you listening to this station, and this station becoming your peaceful place or your security, to say the yeah. least. So let's build off that. So mind you that I wasn't allowed to listen to hip hop. So hip hop wasn't even in the picture for you know my, my early years. Really, I, I didn't really start getting into hip hop until I would say I first started hearing Eminem on the radio because Eminem was really the first to me in my era. He was the first rap hip hop artist to break into pop music. So that's how I was able to listen to Eminem is because he was playing on 107.3, the alternative rock in right. pop station. So, you know, that's that's what shook my whole world up. Fair man. to when say I, you had the complexion for the connection, right? <laughs> yeah. When I heard Hi My Name Is when I was like 12. Hi, man, kids. Like, do you like violence? Like, you started off right like, yeah, I like violence. Yeah. I, I was like, guess. Dude, this psycho, dude. Who is this dude, <laughs> man? Like, so, you know, and then that's when I started kind of understanding just, just little bits of, like, what production is and who produces what. And, like, I, you know, that's – that's how I understood who Dre was, Dr. Dre. And, um, you know, but, but I mean, oh. I kind of want to, I want to take it back just a little bit because. Take it back, take it back. I, I was always fascinated with recordings, you know, like hearing myself. Cause, cause, okay. So long story short, my dad. Oh, I he, know where this is going. My dad was a minister. And so, you know, in his study, he had his, his own study, which is basically almost like a studio. Yeah, he actually had a tape recorder and he would sit back and record his thoughts right. uh, maybe for his next sermons and stuff. And I would actually sneak in and steal his tape recorder and I would just record stuff. I would record me just like talking or like, oh, my God, uh, we have a say we have a we have a close story. Yeah. One of my best friends that I childhood friends, um, you know, who passed away, uh, you know, R.I.P., you know, Chris Shavers. But uh, when we were growing up. You know, either I would spend the night over his house or he'd spend the night over my house. We would like we would mock and play like we would um, have a radio station, you know, like we right. would be radio personalities. And like we would, we would tape ourselves just like right. you know, saying some stupid shit or whatever. Right. And we'd be like, all right, you know, and here's the next song. And like we would literally have like, you know, we would right. act like we had a radio right. uh, station. And, um, you know, that went went into. Uh, me eventually understanding how to create playlists, you know, with uh, recording music straight off of uh, the radio with, with you know, the, the tape players. Right. So then I started, like, you know, recording, like, just some of my favorite songs because I loved them so much. I couldn't wait until the next day to hear that song again. I had to hear it uh, over and over again. So I found a way to to record, and that was just through recording on top of those tape player, uh, the, the tape discs. And, yeah, you know uh, what's crazy? 
What? Your story is ridiculously close to like uh, how I used to get in trouble uh, with my music uh, urge before I got <laughs> hit with the rejection. Um, I used to, my cousin actually started rapping too. Uh, my really? cousin, his name is PG. Shout out PG, and I'm gonna share this with you. You know what we did? Um, we got my dad's um, Lionel Richie's best hits cassette tape. And I remember we had this little, like for the kids, we had this Panasonic uh, two deck tape with double record buttons on both sides where you could just play, you know, that was like fly. And this is like mm -hmm. early 90s. Mm -hmm. And I think 97, 96, 97. And um, PG uh, was trying to help me write a rhyme because he was rapping back then. And we were like, no less than 10 years old. He, he was writing raps and he gave me a name and I don't remember my name, but I remember his name and his name became his rap name. That's the funny thing. <laughs> he, he was called Piggy, but he switched oh. it to PG Rhymes because of Buster Rhymes. You know, I was like, oh, put nice, your hands for nice. my eyes to see. And, see he gave, yeah. and he gave me a name because I never used to rap. I mean, I used to I used to listen to Mob Deep. I used to listen to Will Smith. Funny story. I to, Will Smith was one of my favorite rappers when I was a kid. Yeah, man. This is like 96 when he was the, here come the man in black. Oh, yeah. Getting jiggy with it. Miami. It's like, yeah, Miami, because yeah. I was a kid. Um, and he gives me thank, a name. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Will. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Will. I didn't know that shit was corny. I was a kid. So uh, he, he gave me a name. Now, I mean, I forgot the name, and I have to, like, I'll, I'll invite him to uh, Lessons Learned, and he will talk about it. And we got my dad's Lionel Richie tape, but we didn't know that it was, like, my dad likes listening to these type of things while he's driving to work. He had a little tape thing where he could just, a deck where he could just put his tape in and just listen. So we okay. go on to the tape. I'm like, you know what? We're going to record something. And I'm like, bro, what are we going to record? He's like, yo, this this is the rap for you. So we redid mon more money, more problems, our own version. Just switching same cadence, but switching the words to just meet yeah. meet us. And we got I got in trouble. And he probably uh, didn't even know that. What happened? His Wait, parents went and picked him up. Yeah. And he went back to his house because he was a micro. And I stayed home and I forgot. I didn't know what tastes were. I didn't know that um my dad is going to get his same cassette tapes. Like he, he listens, he, he's playing his stuff, switching it. Then he heard us rap. And that stuff was so funny. Till today, we laugh about that. That's the first rap we wrote because he wrote my stuff for me. He was like switching whatever, because um, I was supposed to be, he was supposed to be Diddy. I was supposed to be Biggie. So he switched BRG. Okay. Uh, yeah, he was switching that to like uh, Kitty Rhymes. And just switching those words to, and he he just gave me that, and I was rapping that, and for some reason, it, 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 it matriculated to this, and that's why I'm like, your story is like super super like, it's freaking me out to see how like, damn, I I did that, like you going to your yeah. dad's study center or like his time to like practice what he's gonna say with, within the sermon or like put out to his congregation and this kid comes in and he starts practicing and that's how you harnessing your skills that's crazy yeah that's wild yeah so i'm gonna fast forward here a little bit you transition from all that that we've talked about right yeah you start to make these beats right i'm going to fast forward too you become a legit producer. Boom. First person that introduces me to you is my boy Jay. He was doing Jay. his master's program at my university. Yeah. Right? Shout out to Jay. Shout Jay. out to Shout Jay, out to Jay Blue. Yeah. I, I don't know if he uses that same name. Jay, Jay Styles. Jay, Jay Styles. Styles. Yeah, he was an R&B singer, rapper, hardcore rapper. I, he switches. But he's out in L.A., man. Like, Jay's a good guy. And, yeah, um, good guy. you know, he introduces me to you. And he introduces me to you with a song that you produced with him that uh, rapper Ace Hood was rapping on. Am I wrong? 
You are. Stop it! So we back again. So uh, due to technical difficulty, uh, we had to uh, restart everything and and just you know bring it back together. But um, we were talking about uh, how I got it wrong about the Ace Hood song and the whole Miami experience because I was I found that whole episode of your yeah. life with my boy Jay very interesting. So tell me about tell you know I me mean, tell everybody about yeah. that. I always listen. Well, um. The, the Miami experience? You want me to tell me about that? or we, we... No, just how did that transpire? How did you guys go to Miami and almost scoop up a deal? Or almost like rub shoulders with these big record labels? And That actually that came we... together through me meeting Stefan, which is, uh, I don't know, uh, for those of you that don't know, Stefan Johnson. Stefan Johnson. Uh, AKA, Shout out AKA to him, man. Business kid. You know, that's, that's what he was his moniker that he was going by back when we first met. And, um, you know, I was in a club. I was actually uh, learning how to DJ from some of my friends who were DJing at this club. And so I was sitting back and then, you know, all of a sudden this kid comes over, you know, he's got his hat backwards and stuff. And, you know, I'm kind of looking at him like, who is this guy? And, um, you know, it turned out to be business kid, Stefan, you know, which um, we just immediately hit it off because, you know, we both, we're passionate about music and um let's and let's give Stefan his roses. Yeah. He's one of the people that I swear that I saw that he had a grip on this um social media internet game. He understood it to the like he's a genius. Oh yeah. That's a, he knows what yeah. he's doing. He knew what he was doing. Um right now, you know, I mean, I don't know what's happening because of what's happening in the world, right. but like that's a guy that if I was working with Google, I want to I want to keep on my team. Yeah, that that dude is a he's a genius. He's a genius. He's a lyrical genius. He's just I mean, and I don't want to just like confine him to just music, but like you know, because he he's yeah. a genius. Um, I love that dude. Shout out to Stefan. But yeah, so so we ended up uh, just connecting. You know, once we connected, we we he would come over uh, my house, and that was when I was really getting in my production bag, man, and so. Uh, we had songs that we were recording to that I, I produced. And um, then we eventually, I think I met Jay through Stefan because uh, yeah. Steph Jay was Stefan's engineer. So uh, yeah. he was like, because uh, we had this song, man, this song was just so fly. And he was like, man, we got to get this like professionally mixed. He was like, I know this guy. I'll lie to you. Jay taught me how to yeah. engineer. He was like. Jay taught me how to engineer, man. Shout outs to Jay, man. Jay, Jay get all the I know, today. But he was like, I know this guy, man. And, and that's that's where we're going to take this uh, this track to. And he'll mix it down for us. I can record my vocals over there. Because, you know, back then, Jay actually had what's called a Neumann mic. Uh, Newman, yeah. Neumann, whatever. And these no, mics no, are no, like, yeah. what, like $7,000 or something? Like that. Seven, ten grand. Ten, ten grand. grand. Sorry. Ooh, excuse me. At that time, at that time, I don't know, I don't know, but like the last time I checked, and it's like, yeah, yeah. he had one of those, and so yeah, that's where we went to record a, a, a song that we produced. It was called "Make It Through." Um, All right, let's move on. Let's move on to uh, collaborations. Who's your favorite person to collaborate with? Man, I would have to. Say oh, who do you want to collaborate with in the future? Like. Either right now that you collaborate with or somebody that you wish to collaborate with. So who is my favorite person to collaborate with? I would actually say is honestly, I would say you. I would say you. You're actually you nah, are nah, you. Man. I'm retired. I'm Bro, retired no, you, no, I don't know if I'm retired. Maybe a little bit. You're uh you're in hibernation right now. You're you you yeah. But let yeah. me let me tell you, yeah, yeah, it's you. It's you. Um, because I think everything that we when we come together we kind of do have an agreement that we're gonna gonna put it all down you know we're gonna put all of our yeah. ego, ego, yeah, at the ego door. At the door. Like, you could tell we're me putting, you let me know like that's, that's we're putting it. all our bullshit aside and we're and i'm not gonna take that doing person. this for the music you know for the love of music yeah. and um you know anytime that i can come across an artist that's that way yeah we're gonna have we're gonna have a fire session um yeah. so so right yeah. now is oh, you? <laughs> uh, oh man, I'll, I'll I'll gratefully take that. Um, right now, thirty-one years of age. 
Wink, wink. Turning 32? 30, 31. <laughs> 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, you, you put three up. You put, okay, okay. Okay, 30, 30 years of age. Wink, wink. We don't know if we say industry age. What are your passions right now? I know you do a lot of things. So let me know. Um, what, what are your passions? Obviously, music, making music, producing. Um, but I'm also passionate about uh, just my health and fitness. Um, so, so I'm a really avid uh, fitness goer. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't consider myself to be like a gym rat, but like you are a gym actually, rat. no, I am. I am. If, you are. You are. You. Are, I, I you go are, almost every are. day. But um, you know, of course, yeah. now we can't. You know, now we're all on self quarantine. I mean, gym. You're a workout. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's not even gym. You just you can find a workout. You could probably work out right now. Like you probably doing ten push ups. I'm maybe. actually going. Well, I'm thinking about. I'm actually ideas. going to after after we get through with this. I'm gonna get a little uh, ab workout in. So, <laughs> but but that's that's something that I'm highly passionate about because I'm always about building myself up and becoming a better person each day, each second. You know, how can yeah. I be yeah. greater than I, I was yesterday? So. You know, you see any, yeah. you know, in, in, in exercise and fitness and working out, you see progress. Yeah. You know, if you put in the work, yeah. you'll see, you see, you see results yeah. and you see progress. So I love doing things like that. Um, All right. Let's see. What else am I passionate about? Um, reading, you know, I mean, I, I love reading. I love reading books. Yeah, you, um, yeah. And in fact, what book are you? Hold on reading? just a second. Let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Break, break. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll hold. So, I'm currently, I'm currently reading a book uh, by a legendary, uh, two-time Grammy award-winning producer, S. One. And uh, this, oh, he wow. actually just dropped this book uh, last month, I believe, and it's called. So pray, focus, plan, yes, execute. That is his motto, and um, this dude has a very inspiring story because you know this is the guy behind, you know, some of the songs like Kanye uh, West's yeah, Power. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he he he's he's such a beast at what he does. No man, no, no, no such man can have this power. That's one of Kanye West's best songs ever. Like, that was that was is that Kanye my West dad twisted fantasy? That's that's uh my dad twisted fantasy, right? Uh, yeah, it was. Kanye. And, and yeah, so that was that was Kanye man. West's like change, like sorry, forget monumental, my like mo changing moment. Um, you know, he definitely evolved from that point. But but yeah, so I'm I'm yeah. reading uh this book, and and so far it's just filled with nothing but inspiration and and you know i i love i love either reading books about people's inspiring stories or i watch a lot of interviews i do a lot of video interviews mm. you know i'll get on youtube and just watch uh the producer grind i don't know if you've heard of producer grind um i, I get on there yeah i heard, I, I heard about so, that you know I'm, I'm always i'm always filling my mind up with people's stories of how they became successful and then uh you know i'll I'll take whatever they did and see if I can apply it to my hmm. life. And so that's, those are a few things that I'm inspired by. Just sharing that with you. Cause I know you're into this type of lifestyle. I don't know if my listeners are, but uh, I've been like gauging in, in this uh, shutdown town, uh, shut down time, not town uh, to a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, Tulupa. I've been into Tulupa. And I think either Who? you or my friend Don put me on to Lupa. Who's Tulupa? Who is that? He's a he's a he's a philosopher. Oh, okay, I thought you were trying to say tilapia uh, at first. I was like, what? Tilupa, 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 T I L O. Tilupa, like the, like the things at Taco Bell. No, no, nah, come on, man. Um, just Google Tilupa. Right. Um, he had one of the best sayings that I now practice a lot is. Uh, be open to everything and attached to nothing. Word, word. Just be open to everything. Learn everything, but attached to nothing because life changes. Especially now that we, 
Dang. Our norm and things that we were taught as kids is changing, and everything's gonna change. Everything's gonna that's, change. Just be open to everything. And that's how you receive enlightenment. And in fact, that's actually what Buddha. And that's the looper, Buddha right here. The philosopher. This is Buddha right here, but that's what Buddha practices. You know, the high, the highest yeah. form of enlightenment is non-attachment. So you you have to you have yeah. to. You know, once you go through most of the lessons in life, you'll eventually come across this lesson, which is. The fact that oh, you can't wow. become attached to anything <laughs> because not, attached to not, nothing. nothing lasts forever. I'm attached to nothing, no besides nothing. our energy, you know, besides, besides our actual spiritual I, energy. Personal ideology, I think we covered that with what you're saying about Buddhism, and I don't want to go in, into right, those right, deep right. waters right now. Um, your downtime, what you doing during this quarantine time? Shh. Beats like this is to me. This is this is actually a blessing in disguise for me because this now is a time, a crucial time for me to where I can act, I have certain connections in the game that they're they're waiting for beats from me, and so like now is a time right. for me to really sit down, stack beats. That's what I've been doing. I've just been making right. beats every single day, right? Um, and, and also connecting with with new artists and songwriters and stuff. There's a new songwriter that right. I just met the other day in an right. in Instagram chat, like, you know what I'm saying, in a live right. feed. So um, just making beats, man. That's that's really making beats, planning for my future, um, you know, and, and investing more time into uh, developing my right. beat store. I have an actual uh, uh, a store to where I have my music on. And um, this year, actually, so I started it back in September and I just started it just to just to have it up and going. And uh, right. I really started uh, intently putting focus into it uh, January. And ever since then, dude, I've had so much um, great things to happen from it's it's so so who powers my site? They're called Beat Stars. They're like, you know, yeah. it's the number one marketplace for uh, produ producers putting their beats out right. and for selling music and stuff. And so they they hit me up and, 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 and they actually reposted one of my beats and they put it up on their Instagram page, on Twitter, right. on, you know, all of their media outlets. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I got so many looks from that. So, you know, right. now... I've got so much traffic still coming to my page, man. Like, like I right. said, so January, I only had like 24 followers on my store. And now I have like 300 right. and something followers from artists. Oh man, that's a lot. I'm getting like 300 plays a day. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Yeah. bro. Like, so now I'm kind of hey. understanding how to direct my traffic to my other sites like YouTube. I just started a YouTube and I'm trying to direct them yeah. to go to my YouTube page and you know, it's digital marketing. So my man, hey, so you've been talking about this digital uh digital marketing and you had this digital store. Um so is there anything that you want me to talk more about or you want to showcase, illustrate? I don't know. How how you feel how, let me let you do it. Choose 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 it how you want it, man. Let me know. Well, let me know. Um you know, of course I stick all my beats and stuff up on my my beat store that you can purchase you can purchase a lease yeah. or you can purchase an, an exclusive rights to some of my beats but um i've actually recently been getting into sound design and developing my own melody loops and uh, yeah i mean you know what i would say yo you don't have beats you have vibes yeah you should call it uh, purchase my vibes true. purchase my it's just energies like beats is like Dog, I make no. You make vibes. You make you make a vibe. Yes. yes. So so you were still going. Sorry, I'm I'm cutting you short off what you was you you where you were going. So uh, so with all so with all uh, the new followers that I have on my beat store, um, I kind of want to give back. I want to give something. I want to give them a gift, and um, I'm actually going to be dropping a free melody loop pack. Um, it's going to consist of ten like just fire melodies. And you'll be able to download it, um, and you know this will be. I, I'm I'm going to drop it in the next few months. Free. Um, so free is the word. That's, free yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on recently too. Is just like I will open up my sessions and I'll just literally just be making melodies and stuff. But, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You sing all this, man. Just play some, play some of that free stuff. Every real person is like, yo, man, yeah, you doing. 
play some of that free stuff because at the end of the day, you say free and people are like, uh, does it have value? Man, play some of that. You free want me to give you a sample? I mean, yeah, sure. Oh, and, and if it's free, forgive me, I may have first dibs on it. <laughs> All the rappers, this is my friend, this is my boy. So if I jump on it earlier than y'all, forgive yeah, me. And once again, right, so this, these loops are for producers to grab hold of and then lace beats and drums on top of these melodies so i repeat again rappers i'm a producer yeah, too yeah, i have yeah. a beat you, machine you produce too, so <laughs> you know it, this could be for you i'm not really a producer but i'm learning how so to. i'll just uh let's see i'll play a few loops um let me see here which the born and raised a fast let's get it gotta remind people uh what time it is what hey i'm gonna ask you and i'm gonna go i'm only gonna give you like about 15 seconds for the listeners right now people that are used to listening to strap hip-hop remind them what time it is on that beat making type of deal do you got something that you could play off the top to remind them like <laughs> man <laughs> a is a problem. A is a problem. Just, just, just one. And, and I know we live in in this in this time, or we in this time where Instagram is doing these battles. But you're a prop. You're a problem. Yeah, like we were doing samples for the producers. Let just remind them what time it is right now. I got you, man. Just remind. Oh, and you know what? You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? Uh -huh. I may have to start with this song or end with this song on this podcast. Yeah. You never know. So depending on how you hear it. The backstory, like this beat is actually right now it's in somebody's hands. And this weekend I'm supposed to be working with some uh, a lot of major artists. So I'm hoping for this one to get placed. Actually, I'm not hoping. All right, let's get I, it. Um, it's going it's to get placed. It's already placed. Cut it, 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 cut it,
yeah, until and un- 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 until it's done, done, done. Don't put that out. Don't put that out. Yeah. Oh, man. Man. Hey. 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 Hey, man. I'm proud of you. All right. So we transition into moving people from that area to your YouTube. That's heavy, man. That's nice. Like it's it's always good to have a place where you could um, transport people and transport a traffic into this place. So um, keep yeah, going. What, what other places? What other places? And other things. It's not easy. So what I've what I've grown to understand is now I've kind of I've really delved into um, digital marketing. Yeah. Um, you know, just doing my marketing. research on digital marketing, branding, making sure that you have your your logo together. Make sure that you have everything together to where you know even the thumbnails on your videos to where yeah. it attracts people because it's like people's attention is so small man and they really don't give a you know they don't uh, you know i don't want to cuss but it's like they really don't no, you could cuss you could cuss go ahead this this is the average, people person, gonna... the average person really doesn't give a fuck about anybody who hasn't made it you know or anybody yeah. who's not their favorite artist or their favorite celebrity so right. you have to give people a reason to to like you and um you so, know once again so, for me digital marketing has been my uh number one topic i've been studying in, in, so um this here. this is a very key element this is the biggest piece of us speaking uh sitting down and speaking what are the lessons learned what are your lessons learned along the way Something that you would put in two sentences to help a young version of A. Fost. Something that you would summarize and take your time. Well, for, for, I've got one thing that kind of really st- sticks out to me, and it's 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 really just to just to be yourself, um, to 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 really trust yourself, hone into yourself and what your passion is. And to just focus solely on that. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing, you know, because uh, the thing is, every everybody receives blessings, you know, uh, according to how God has already aligned their life to be. So, you right. know, just because you see this person over here, they 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 may be like, if they're a producer, they may have got their first beat that they ever made. They may have gotten that beat placed with a big artist. Well, good for them, you know, um, celebrate their su- success, excuse me, celebrate their success, but continue to focus on your own growth because you may not have the same success story as them. And I, I guarantee you, you won't have the same Objection. story as them. So everybody's yeah. story is different. So, Absolutely. um, you know, if, if you can continue, just continue to focus on you yourself and building yourself up and eventually you will get where you want to get to, man. And you just you got to put those blinders on sometimes, man, because, you know, you, you, you can you can really psych yourself out and to think that like, dang, like I've been doing this for so many years and I haven't seen anything. You know, I haven't seen any mm. um, any uh, uh, anything harvested fruits to, from, fruits to the, the effort. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I haven't seen any fruits to the seeds I've been planting, you know, and yeah. the, the thing is, you just got to continue to plant those seeds and just continue growing, continue moving, continue to. Just you just have to be better, man. Every day, like I said, try and be a better person every day, man, and try and develop and grow yourself. And eventually, you'll get there. And when you get there, it's going to be a lot much more. Um, you're you're going to be able to hold and balance yourself out, and to you're going to be able to hold that blessing and and stretch it because yeah. you've gained so much knowledge along the way. So yeah. you know that there's. There's a difference between a person who has that overnight success and then a person who has been working and grinding and building brick by brick. Yeah. And, you know, that person is going to have way more knowledge than the person who just got, you know, yeah, it's just got lit overnight. So yeah. um, I'm all about like staying power, stay, staying power, you know, like being able to stay in the game for mm-hmm. a long period of time. And Longevity longevity i'm all about longevity um and i know when i when i reach that moment um i'll be able to continue to fire off and uh so that's my what guy I, my that, guy that's what i would give to the world my guy 
A Fast. Yeah. Thank you for sitting down with me. Ladies always, and gentlemen. Man. Always a pleasure, bro. This has been always. um Lessons Learned ATW along the way. Um I couldn't have I could not have asked for a better um, guest. I uh, appreciate it, man. God Likewise, bless. Likewise, man. It's always good talking with you, bro. And stay quarantined. <laughs> yes. And stay away from the old people. <laughs> hey, Peace, and love, right, my brother. <laughs> Peace and love, my brother. Peace and love, my brother. All right, then, brother. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>